Hey guys, it's Aaron. We had a request through a couple different channels uh, to show the drape tool in Sandbox and how that would work with a uh, landscaping plan. Um, a couple people actually asked this, so since I'm always asking you to tell us what you want to do, I figured I better do it. Um, actually, it could have been the same person asking on different channels with different names, but whatever the reason, I'm going to do it. So <laughs> this has been requested. We're going to take a look at how to do this. So we're going to use just native tools, just the sandbox tools to uh, create, take a flat landscaping plan drawn up and put it onto some contours. So let's hop in. All right. This is a basic plan. I just, I trace this off of a landscape plan I found online. Uh, each of the different areas is a different, I don't know what you call it, finish. Um, it's a, a different, something different in the plan. Uh, these white sections are where buildings will actually be. This is quite a big yard. Um, not, not my yard, that's for sure. But what we'll do is we'll take this and we'll put it onto a contoured lot. So I'm going to come over here and the first thing I'm going to do is use sandbox tools. Since I have the sandbox tools window open right here, these are the, the tools for sandbox tools. I'm going to start by creating a grid. So I'm going to use that tool and this is 250 feet by 165 feet. So I'm just going to draw that. I'm going to come this way, 250 feet, enter, 165 foot, enter. And I did that all using a, a five foot grid. You can see down here in the lower right corner, uh, it's set to five feet right now. All right. So with that, I've created the group that is my grid. If I double click into the grid, this is where I can use things like the smooth tool to come in here and make changes to the geometry. I don't want to make something super radical. I'm going to assume that this site's been graded for the most part. When I lay this down, I'm not going to worry about huge bumps or anything like that. But I will say that, let's say we have a, a, a gradual raise. So there's a gradual rise. This thing kind of slopes up a little bit towards the back. I'm going to get a nice big brush, maybe a like a 200 foot brush. And I'm just going to grab this back and uh, pull that up vertically. I'm gonna grab this side over here, pull it up maybe a little uneven. So, you know, we're not quite, it's not perfect because it's, it's reality. <laughs> Reality's not perfect. All right, so that gives me a little bit of a, a little, little raise over the, the span of that space. Um, from here, of course, we do, this is pretty simple stuff. I'm gonna triple click, right click and reverse faces. That way we have the white showing up instead of the backside. Um, I'm also going to toggle coplanar smoothing so I get this nice one nice smooth piece rather than a bunch of different ones. And there we go. I'm going to keep this in a group. I do not want to explode this out at this point. I want to keep it in the group. And I'm going to come over here, grab this geometry, I'm going to triple click to select all of this and use move to move it from the corner right here to the origin. And notice I drew that grid from the origin too. Now I can drop this right on top without worry of anything merging because my smooth landscape is in a group. So even though this is loose geometry, it's not going to merge with anything because I have that group underneath there. All right, now I'm going to move it straight up. I'm actually going to tap the up key on the keyboard to constrain vertically and I'm going to slide it up by the way. It doesn't matter how high up I move this. I want to move it up far enough so I have it, no problem getting the camera under here and working down here. So I'm just going to slide it way a couple hundred feet up in the air. Now, to drape this geometry down onto my smooth geometry, while it's still selected, I'm going to come over here and click on the drape icon. Then, it's going to ask me what mesh do we want to drape onto. I'm just going to cover, come over and click on this mesh, and then that's going to take it and just project my line straight down and show me where everything intersects. And that is actually breaking it. So if I double click to enter this group, I can pick these different sections and see there actually are uh, separate surfaces. So that was pretty easy. I mean, that, that could be, that's a quick win, not a skill builder. Let's take that a little bit further. So one of the things I can do with this same setup without changing anything, intentionally not moving anything, is I can actually rough out where the foundation would be. So where do I want to actually remove for the foundation? I can do that by using push-pull on the house. So this is the, the footprint of the house. And I just drag that down right through the bottom of our contours, of our, of our shape there. Um, I'll go ahead and pull the guest house down too. Yeah, that's a guest house. Like I said, it's uh, 
not my house, and the shed out back. I don't even have a shed, much less a guest house, so um, the shed probably doesn't need that big of a foundation. Maybe that'll be up like that. All right, so once those are pulled down, intersected, I can do a sweep select, le right to left. That gives me the dotted line. So that crosses all that geometry. What I can do right now is right click and say intersect faces with model. That's going to take all that push-pull geometry and break it where it hits our contours. So I'm going to grab this right now, just grab this section on the middle and delete. When I do that, you can see that foundation stayed underneath there. If I double click into this group, I can actually select, delete, delete, and delete those shapes. And this may be what I'm shooting for. This might be actually something that's helpful in my, uh, my design process. And actually see that's the, uh, you know, the foundation is probably going to be a little bit different than that, but it gives me a good visualization of how this structure will break uh, into the landscape. Now, if I want to go a little further than that, I want to say, well, yeah, the, the holes are nice, and maybe, maybe I could use this to calculate, you know, dirt removal, that kind of thing. But what I'd rather have is a visualization of where this house sticks up out of the ground. What I can do is go to push-pull again. I'm going to hit Option to make a copy of that surface and pull that up. And I'll just pull it like, know, like 20 feet above the ground. And I'll just do the same thing here. Option, pull that up to the same height. And I'll come over here and option, I'll pull that up. Not quite as big. It's a shed. So that gives me real quick and easy a house mass that I can visualize along with my landscaping work. Um, I did, since I used option, it left the bottom underneath there. If I wanted to, I could come through right now and, you know, just select and delete that section below. That that would be no big deal. It'd be pretty easy to do. I like it. I'm going to leave it. Um, that way I can, you know, it's there if I ever want it. I'd use the same process to grab something like this uh, patio. I think there's actually a pool on there in the real uh, drawing. And I could pull this down so it's just lining up me with the... Uh, lowest point of the house right there. What I could do there is again same thing select intersect faces with model delete these pieces come in here and delete this and I could see okay if I wanted this piece right here to be flat that's what I'd have to do. I'd have to dig my yard down to what how far down is this? This looks pretty severe. Four and a half feet I'd have to drop down. I do now have the option though to click right here. Option click here. And bring that up to that low point. And I could see, right, that's what I'd have to do with this, this concrete patio to make it level from the back of the house coming out into the existing yard. So just some different options on how you could use that SketchUp geometry and that model to visualize how I want to put those flat surfaces in to this contoured shape. And of course from here if I wanted to, it would be real easy to grab my paintbrush. Um, we'll come in here first. And grab my paintbrush, sample these colors, and then just drop them where they go around the model. And so on and so on and such and such or whatever. But that gives you an idea of the kind of thing you can do with the sandbox tools and just a couple of push-pulls. So hopefully there's a tip or two in there that you gained. Hopefully you learned something new. Um, that's kind of why we make these, kind of accidentally teach you a little bit of something, let it, let it leak in there, even if it's a, a tool you're familiar with. Um, if you did like it, give us a like down below and uh, subscribe. That way you'll be notified the next time a video like this comes out. Most importantly though, leave a comment for us. Like I said, this video is a direct result of somebody asking for something like this on one of our channels. We like making these videos, but we like making them a lot more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.